Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Matthew. Uh, so today, uh, we're not going to be talking about any general, you know, toys or collectibles or anything like that. Uh, this was just a video that uh, one of my friends asked me to make. Um, so I, I talked about it briefly, not too often. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of time over the last, you know, dozen years or so uh, working overseas. You know, obviously not non-stop or anything like that. You know, I've had breaks in between. Uh, so one of the things was they wanted me to talk about the different companies I work for and, you know, what would be the preferred business uh, to go into for those who are actually looking to uh, work overseas. Uh, so the thing is, I mean, me, I like stability. You know, I hate, you know, jumping from job to job. I like to be one of those guys who... You know, start working at a company at like age 20 and by the time age 65 rolls around, you know, they retire from working for the same company. Um, I haven't been fortunate enough to actually be able to experience something like that. Uh, so in the past, I used to think, uh, you know, I used to hate that because, again, you know, I don't like going from house to house, city to city, job to job, things like that. So um, it, it was always a, a decrement for me. But nowadays, I kind of look at it as a positive because now I can look at what other companies have done and what my current company is doing and, you know, what worked for them may not be working for the current company and so forth. And, you know, it, it's beneficial. Uh, you know, I'm able to come up with new innovative ideas to, you know, help a, a business, you know, excel a bit more. So... Again, uh, this is simply based on uh, some of the companies I've worked for uh, as an overseas contractor. So whether you're prior service or, and, and and it's not necessarily you don't have to be you know a service member or a prior service member in order to get these jobs. I mean anyone with the you know education background, or professional experience, you know as a civilian, you can still get these jobs too. So this is really open to anybody that's interested in working overseas and. Uh, well, they pretty much shut down Afghanistan, so that's pretty much off the table, which sucks. I mean, I loved Afghanistan. I spent majority of the 2010s in Afghanistan. I uh, spent most of my time in Shindan, which is, you know, south, southwest uh, Afghanistan, uh, Kandahar, which is, you know, further south, uh, Herat province. You know, those were really awesome uh, bases to be at. And, of course, everybody knows about, you know, Fab Shank and, and uh, Bagram, which, you know, probably north, northeast of Afghanistan. But um, they, they pretty much pulled out of Afghanistan, so that's off the table. Now, if you do want to go overseas, you got to look at places like Kuwait, Iraq, uh, Jordan, um, Syria, if you're lucky. But <laughs> most military don't want, you know, civilians in, in Syria, which, which sucks because, you know, that to me... Uh, Fabi uh, Shadadi in Syria was one of my favorites. So, again, this is just a, a list of about five companies that I, I've worked for. You know, how I'd rate them. You know, uh, if you are looking for, you know, employment, you know, some of the companies you might want to, you know, look into. Some of those that you might want to stay clear of. So, for me, the worst company I've ever worked for is probably uh, Akama Technical Solutions. Now, before I dive further into that, just think about this. I used to work for AC first. So that tells you everything you need to know as far as how bad Akama really is as a business. <laughs> so we, we think, of, and it's not necessarily the work itself that, that gets you. I mean, it's the little things. Uh, so when you first go to any of these companies, you know, companies like Mantec, you know, they, they send you to Chantilly, Virginia, uh, Acoma, Lockheed Martin, they work out of the same building. You go to Fayette, North Carolina, and you'll spend about a week or so, you know, you'll be in a hotel, you go through orientation, training, whatnot, get your medical screening, all that. So where Acoma severely failed is they don't, they pretty much stay clear of you. Uh, they don't really check on you. you. You'll see how you're doing, ask if you need help or anything like that. So there's a, a lot of courses, a lot of uh, certificates you got to you know get prior to going forward to uh, doing the military portion of your, you know, your training exercise. Uh, in, in the past, they sent you to Fort Bliss, Texas uh, for week two to go through all your training, get your gear and all that before you uh, move out to your duty assignment. Uh, because of COVID, they pretty much... Did away, for, did away from that for the most part. 
Now they still have some funds going through CRC and Fort Bliss, but uh, what they call is SRC now, which you you basically do uh, two weeks with your company instead of one. The second week is, again, going through your medical screening and, and all those processes. So, again, this company, uh, don't, have, don't check on you. Make sure that you're doing your right courses. Uh, they don't talk to you about any of your medical benefits. They don't you know sit down with you and try and work on your 401k absolutely horrible uh yeah you want to sit there you want to be professional be be respectful and say oh yeah you guys are doing such a great job you know thank you so much but in reality the folks are pretty much just sitting in their office next door you know pushing papers all day long you know from what i could see uh, nothing that's too strenuous that takes away from you know coming over and actually helping the new hires and it's kind of frustrating and of course you get to your your, your duty assignment and you look at your leads, and you know they tell you straight up, "Hey, I don't, I don't want to be a manager. A manager, I didn't ask for this job. I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> I have no intention whatsoever of you know treating you like a human being, or you know tutoring or mentoring you. And you know that it's so rough that I mean, you, you could already tell it's not going to be a positive experience. That they're just you know you're already overseas, you're away from your home, your family. It's it's already a stressful, you know, no matter how long you're gone. And to be put in that position with people that don't know how to treat others like human beings. And and it's primary reason why I put Akama as the worst company I've ever worked for. Normally I sucked it up and, you know, put up with abuse for a lot of years. And this time around, you know what? I finally got the level of education that you know, that pretty much gives me the opportunity to, you know, get any job I want. Um, I've got, I've definitely got more than enough years of experience. You know, I don't have to put up with that type of behavior. And, you know, that's right there. That's actually one of, you know, some one of the things I'm uh, writing my dissertation on is, you know, the influence that leaders have, you know, the impact that they have on their, uh, their employees, you know, employees' motivation and, you know, willingness to go the extra mile. You know, there's nothing said for, for a decent amount of kindness for people. You know, I, me, I take on a, kind of like a, a, a servant-type leadership position. And when people hear servant, they think that you're being subservient to someone else and, and that they're bossing you around. And that's not the case. For me, it just simply means that, you know, you're there to, to help and support the people that that are basically working for you, you know. You don't want them to struggle. You want to sit back and be able to do some stuff that's going to, you know, benefit them because the harder or more productive they are, the better for your business and heck, better for you as a leader, you know, make you make you look good yourself. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was it was just a, a horrible, uh, horrible, horrible job. I, I did not. I mean, I was only with them for a couple months. I'm like, you know, you know. I, I could go for a company and spend years with them, and after two months, I was finished. It, just no positives to take away from it. Horrible experience, terrible leadership. Nobody really cares, you know. And, and you, you'll learn about this. Anybody who's worked for more than five minutes knows the deal with most companies. It's not about what you know. It is about who you know. So... Akama Technical Solutions, possibly the worst company I've ever worked for. Uh, number four is a, a company I worked for in Afghanistan. It was the last company I've worked for in Afghanistan. It's uh, AC First. AC First is just another one of those, I don't want to say subcontractor. They're uh, a sister company of AECOM. Now, AECOM is actually a major corporation, and you know they've got all these little sub-companies that they create. They kind of it's so you know Acom is the the parent company, and they got all these little branches that come off the tr the main tree, you know, and they they plug them into different locations, and you know those those groups you know uh, are part of the overall business uh, plan of of Acom. AC first, I I knew what I was getting into. Uh, this was a few years ago. Um, you know, when you're looking for a job, and you know. This business was hiring, even though I've, I've heard for years how horrible they were. I've, I've dealt with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
you know, the people themselves are, aren't that bad for the most part. Uh, it's just it's a lot of politics and that goes into it. So it's just, it wasn't a situation I wanted to be a part of. But again, I was looking to return overseas and, and they had a job available for me. So that's what it all boiled down to. Uh, I had absolutely no interest of actually working for AC First ever in my life. And getting there, um, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, you had time off to an extent. Um, you know, I, I could do my schoolwork after work and whatnot. It, it was great uh, for, for the beginning. And then they changed up leadership and then brought someone else who just, I don't know, they, every it's like the military when they come into a, a new post and they take over you know when they do their rips and you know switch out the old with the new everyone wants to put their own little footprint on on, on their business dealings and it, it just became so hectic and it wasn't just the leader itself you mean the whole the whole company as a whole just the the way that they set up their their business dealings the way that they deal with their uh, their customers, the military, you know, there it's it's a type of atmosphere where yeah, you you laugh and, and joke in, in the person's face, but then you'll stab them in the back, you know, when they're not looking. So <sighs> benefits were absolutely horrible. Um, the leaders, I don't want to say all the leaders because there's maybe a select few, but I mean the, the people in. in, in I guess in general, we're, we're great to work with. Um, yes, I mean, it's not too many positives to take away from it, but I mean, the negatives aren't like, you know, just way out there. Uh, it's just overall, you know, when it comes to pay and, and, you know, the work that you're actually required to do, it just, to me, it just wasn't worth it. So, uh, AC first comes in number four, uh, the third best business, my little t-shirt namesake here, Lockheed Martin. First time I worked for Lockheed, and I, again, keyword first time, or for keywords first time. Um, so it does mean I did come back to their company a second time around. So after I left the first time, I said I was never going to work for Lockheed Martin again. Uh, it was a horrible uh, experience. No, not a horrible. I mean, that's unfair. So the first time going through orientation, uh, didn't really have, it was kind of like going with Acoma, you know, no one actually sat down with you, you know, worked on your benefits, you know, told you about your 401k plan or anything like that. So you're, you're basically completely in the dark. Now, fortunately, the second time I came back a, a few years later, I was rehired and I already knew what to expect going into orientation. So, you know, obviously, what are you doing when you're going from one business to another? You're always comparing you know, the different companies you've worked for. And the first time around, that's what I was doing. I, I was comparing it to, you know, going to Mantech, for example. And I absolutely hated it. Uh, when I got to my job itself, I had a lead that, you know, one of those, you know, you're not part of my clique, so I don't care about you type of leads, you know, tells you that, you know, I've got your back or, you know, I'll support you in front of, you know, key leadership, but then curses you out when no one's, uh, no one's looking. So, you know, when I was by myself and, and great job, I absolutely love what I was doing, you know, on a daily basis, military, uh, other civilians that worked on base there, you know, they told me every day that how much, you know, better, uh, you know, the office was because, uh, because I was there. So, I mean, it was, it was a great experience for me to actually be with Lockheed back in that day. It was 2016. And then when I came up to Bagram with, you know, with all the key leadership, uh, you know, obviously had to be around, you know, that attitude where, you know, you don't really fall under those, those clicks. So you don't really matter. So it, I was with, with Lockheed the first time about a year and a half, a little over, I think. Um, never said, I said when I left, I was never come back again. It was, again, it was overall, it wasn't the best experience, but again, I, I needed a job and I, I look back into go, going back with, uh, Lockheed again and they did hire me, uh, rehire me back, uh, right before, um, well, oh, right beginning of January, 2020. And it was like night and day guys. Uh, so this time around, again, knowing what to expect going into orientation, 
But uh, there was a girl there, Michelle. She was just absolutely amazing. I mean, she was on point with you there every single day, helping you with your classes, you know, going over your security, your certificates, you know, talking about your, your medical benefits, you know, actually having someone sit down with you and, you know, talk about your 401k plan with you, you know, pros and cons and stuff. That stuff right there, you know, that is so absolutely amazing. Um, you have no idea as a new employee, as a new hire, you know, how instrumental that is, um, not only to, to feeling really good and having a positive outlook about your business, but just thinking, just thinking that, hey, we got people here that care about us. So Lockheed Martin, the second time I worked for him, absolutely amazing. Uh, this job was actually in Kuwait. Absolutely loved what I did. You know, I was back in the warehouse again, which is my sorry, background, uh, warehousing. So that was, that was so, so much, uh, so much fun. And I just worked with some truly phenomenal people down the warehouse down there. So uh, there's a couple guys, uh, Amos and Sam, uh, the leaders that were down there. They said one word, and all it took was one word. They said, welcome. <laughs> because, you know, again, with, with the first time around when I, when I tried with uh, with Lockheed Martin, you know they kind of threw me off, threw me on the boat or whatnot. Uh, and then second time around, you know they they were welcoming you, like hey, you know they actually treated you as part of the team. So it was a really fantastic experience coming back. Mm. Excuse me. Um, so after I spent about six months or so in Kuwait, uh, then I got reassigned to to Iraq, which was fantastic. Uh, Erbil, Iraq, absolutely loved it out there. It's the first time I've actually been to Iraq as a contractor. You know, as a soldier, I always went to Iraq on my deployments. But as a contractor, it was always Afghanistan. You know, a couple times, obviously, passed through or worked in Kuwait, but not anything, you know, extensive. So I was in Iraq for a couple months. I requested uh, Syria. Went to Syria. I was there for several months. At one point, I got injured uh, towards the middle of 21 had to come home. Uh, so yeah, that, that really, really sucked because that really put me behind the curve as, as far as the goals I wanted to achieve. Uh, so that was Lockheed Martin. Again, you're talking one of the biggest aeronautical companies on the planet. You know, you're talking north of $60 billion in uh, sales per year. You know, uh, whether you're an engineer, mechanics, or you work in supply, you know, uh, Lockheed Martin, I mean, one of the largest companies on the planet. I think they're second to, uh, I want to say Boeing. It's still number one as far as aer aeronautics. But again, Boeing deals with pretty much all the airports throughout the entire United States. You know, Lockheed Martin, they're, they're mostly contracted for mostly military uh, contracts, so... I don't know how much Boeing makes. I haven't looked at their uh, their sheets in a long while, uh, their balance sheets. But I'm thinking they're probably making like probably north of 300 billion a year. Uh, again, I could be overestimating, but then I could be underestimating. Who knows? But uh, and you know, Lockheed Martin itself is you know a pretty interesting company. So Martin Marietta and uh, Lockheed Corporation, uh, they joined forces back in like '95. One of the biggest mergers. And the whole purpose of the company it was to take the number two or number three aeronautical companies, put them together, and try to surpass Boeing. I mean, that obviously never happened, but I mean, still, Lockheed Martin, you talk about a premier company. So that's Lockheed Martin. Uh, they would be, I guess, my third favorite company that I've worked for. Number two would be Mantec. Now, Mantec, outside of the Army, uh, six years in the Army, Mantec, I spent three and a half years with them in Afghanistan. So it is, I guess, the second longest job I've ever had. And Mantec, it's like the Army. Uh, first half, I worked for the company. I absolutely loved it. Second half, I don't want to say absolutely hated it, but it, it was just completely different. Uh, everything from drop and pay, uh, they used to offer you like free phone cards every month, which was, oh my God, guys, that was so spectacular. It's, it's something so simple, but it's the simple things in life that really stand out. And so 
you know, I got assigned to Shindana Air Force Base uh, in uh, south southwest Afghanistan, uh, Firebase Thomas, which was a nice little hidden gem not too many people are familiar with. Absolutely loved the work I did. Uh, as the only logistician, you know, nobody really messed with me because, you know, I had the, you had mechanics and you had me, and I pretty much did everything that, you know, uh, you had guys up in Bagram, you had guys in Kandahar, all the Americans, and then you had, you know, um, you know, guys from, you know, other countries, Nepal, the Philippines, etc. And, you know, they all worked together, so you had all these extra people. Now, I was by myself, I always did the work of 10 people by myself, which was, you know, infuriating. You know, there's days I'd have, like, 14-hour, <laughs> 16-hour, 18-hour work days. And what kind of got me is... Um, when all the for all the time I was there, I don't know how many times over the years I asked for uh, for another person to be sent down to help me out. Uh, you know, they always got the same excuse; they they couldn't spare anybody. Then at one point, when they find a site to to move me to a different site, so on Shindan you had uh, I guess we were considered the maintenance side, and then you had the distribution center on the other side of the camp or the base. And so me and the other logistician, uh, we swapped places. So when they swapped me with him, uh, they brought him in over and they brought two other guys over. So I'm like, hold on a minute, guys. Let me get this straight. For three years, you're telling me you couldn't feel, you couldn't send someone else to help me because you couldn't spare anybody, but you replaced me with not one, not even two, but three people? <laughs> And, you know, it, it sucks because I came back a couple months later. I got came back off R&R, &R and, uh, &R and I was passing through uh, Shindan. And, you know, one of the mechanics, you know, the the new site lead, you know, was telling me about how badly those guys were struggling. You know, I always felt terrible because, one, you don't want your friends to, to struggle like that, you know. You know, you want people to, to be able to work hard and, and be able to do what they've got to do, you know. Um, but I got to admit, I did kind of smile a little bit because – Guys were struggling to do what you know I did by myself for years, and so it just goes to show you all the hard work and efforts that I really put into my job. And there was never be a, another job like that. I don't think I don't think anyone could anything could ever compare it really to uh, what I was able to achieve at that site. I mean, I basically stood that site up from nothing, uh, very little supplies and equipment, and. I went from about three conics's worth of parts to about twenty in like six months, so I set that up to for for longevity, for long term uh, success. And you know, you know, DCMA they would come out, they would do their little audits. Most sites they usually hover around seventy seventy one percent. I think I got like a grade of like ninety eight percent, which is unheard of. You're not going to go to any site and score eighty ninety percent. Uh, you know, have as far as accountability, as far as having all your paperwork matched up, and to get almost a hundred, oh, man, that's like one of the highlights of my professional life right there. That's that's incredible. The yeah, Mantec, I mean, it was my for the longest time, it was my favorite company. It was it was just so amazing. But at the end of the day, when I finally got laid off, uh, twenty fourteen. You know, they were doing a drawdown. Everybody was supposed to be gone by the end of the year. That obviously never happened. And, you know, losing my job like that, it was just, it was a slap in the face for all my years of hard work and dedication. So, you know, I, I felt a certain kind of way about them. And all these years, I've been applying to go back. You know, nobody has said anything to me about, yeah, we, we can't bring you back on or, or nothing. I just... You know, higher education, more years of experience. I'm basically applying to the same jobs I've had in the past, and and I'm not I'm not hearing anything. So uh, yeah, so Mantech at one point would have been a highlight, but since then, just seeing how how they're starting to operate over the last few years, you know, some actually being deployed and actually seeing how some of their leaders and and folks work, uh, it's kind of kind of sad, and it's exactly why the military thinks so lowly of contractors, you know, uh, some of the criminal activity they do is just insane. So Mantech uh, definitely has one of my higher ratings, but again, uh, it, it's severely gone downhill since, you know, I first started. I first started them 
in 2011, and you see them now, night and day, guys. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say stay clear of their company, but at the same time, be prepared to, <laughs> to put up with some stuff if, um, if you ever did get hired on to go overseas with them. So the best company I've ever worked for, and I only worked for them for one year, and it wasn't an overseas assignment. It was uh, here in Louisville. Uh, it was with Raytheon. So Raytheon, before I even started working with them, I was already going to them like the greatest company ever. Uh, so for years, you know, working overseas, anytime I came across a, a Raytheon employee, you know, they always bragged and bragged and bragged about Raytheon. You know, it was always like this family-oriented uh, business, you know. You know, everyone cared about each other. Everyone supported each other. And that was so weird because you never hear about, you know, different businesses. Uh, you know, it, someone's always complaining about their companies. You know, there's there's even the ones that have a lot of high positive ratings, you know, there's going to be something negative. You know, I, I kind of compare it to like a car or a house. You can move into the most perfect house you've ever seen. has absolutely everything you're looking for. And you're still going to find a million things wrong with that house. You know, companies, they're no different. You, you, you could absolutely love everything about it, but then you're going to find, you, you can nitpick here and there and, you know, find some things that, you know, you would do differently or that you don't like. So, uh, right at the end, I ended up turning out to be one of those companies for me. When I got hired, you know, they paid for my relocation from Texas, you know, moved me to Kentucky. I mean, that was a huge bonus. I, I never would have been able to, to move myself otherwise. And the work I was doing as a property administrator, I mean, there's nothing like it. Uh, some of the benefits, you know, as far as medical benefits, you know, definitely the best I think any company has ever produced. Absolutely amazing. Uh, great pay for, for being a stateside employee. I mean, not just great pay, I would say elite pay. Um, you know, every other Friday off, I mean, that those three day weekends every other weekend I mean that, that right there is is enough to, for, to tie up anybody and you, you notice that a lot of times with when with these positions when when you leave a, a position and someone else gets hired for it they're in that position for like the next 30 40 years I mean if you're fortunate enough to actually land a job with right on it's one of those things where you got to stick with it forever or else you're never going to be able to get that job back again. And so uh, when I did leave Raytheon, it wasn't due to any anger problems or anything like that. I mean, I told the folks when when I left, you know, it was strictly uh, a financial decision. So initially when I was kind of like calculating what I was going to earn in, uh, you know, pay and whatnot. So I, I bought a house based on what I was going to earn. And as a business, uh, a business, uh, I don't know, you call it business student, why not? Um, as a student of business, you know, I should have calculated a whole lot better than I did. And so I wasn't quite getting the amount of money I thought I was. So I bought a house that was, I don't want to say too expensive. I mean, I'm, I'm easily able to pay my bills, not, not any issues there. But I, I was thinking I was going to have a whole lot more money going into savings. And that wasn't the case. And like I said in all my videos, I have OCD and things like you know, paying your bills, I can't stand owning money. So, you know, if I buy a house for like two fifty, for example, I don't want to sit there and spend 30 years paying on a $250,000 house. If I can get that thing paid off in like five years or less, you know, I'm all for it. So I decided to go back overseas and that's when I went to AC first and pay for my house. Um, still been working on it though. I could have gotten it done, you know, a long, long time ago, but uh, I keep coming home and, well, I'm living comfortably, let's just put it that way, so. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, obviously, I work for other companies, a couple others. Nothing, nothing really stands out. Uh, I'm not going to throw military service into this. Uh, we're at 29 minutes. Maybe I could talk about military for a few minutes. I'm not going to talk about the jobs or anything like that. I'm not going to talk about basic training or anything like that. Uh, um, I guess we could throw it in here because, let's be honest, without the Army, I wouldn't have ever been able to land these type of jobs. So, you know, getting a job as a, a warehouse man, supply technician, however you want to call it, um, you know, I owe a lot to the Army for itself. 
anybody, boys and girls, anyone interested of, of joining the military, you know, once you make make it past basic training, I mean, that's like the biggest headache you're going to experience. AIT, I mean, you're not quite permanent party yet, but you're, you're, you're just basically going to school for the most part. So, yeah, you still got your PT and all that, but AIT really wasn't much. Um, Benefits-wise, pay isn't great. It's adequate. You know, it's livable. You know, if you're married, you get that extra housing and, and you know, food allowance. So, I mean, that shoots up your pay another twelve to $20,000 a year, depending on where you live. Uh, obviously, if you're living in New York compared to living in Texas, obviously your pay in, in New York would be a whole lot higher. But so, I mean, and of course, free medical insurance, free uh, free medical you know, life insurance, like what, twenty seven dollars a month, something like that, for like four hundred thousand bucks. So there's just a, a ton of benefits to being in the military. And like I said, you know, if you're young enough and you want to do the military for a few years, help pay for college and then get out, get a job like, you know, overseas contractor, you know, being prior service it definitely has its benefits. But I think most people if you're eighteen years old and you're just graduated high school you want a job in the next 20 years, you know, military is not exactly the worst thing to do ever. Uh, I've tried talking myself in several times over the years of rejoining. Now I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure I, I uh, aged out. I don't know, maybe I can still get back in with the waiver, but do I really want to go back in? And if I do, it's going to, I want to be, you know, I don't want to be full, I don't want to be doing part-time work, you know. I don't want to be a reservist. If it's not active duty, I wouldn't be interested. So, um, I, I really ha had, when I kind of thought about this in my head, and I thought about some of the things I was going to say, I actually had a whole lot more information. But, again, actually sitting in front of the computer and, and actually talking about it, you know, trying to think about what I wanted to say and actually relaying the information, obviously wasn't quite as extensive. But, in a nutshell... Those are, you know, five companies that you might want to consider that are pr pretty prevalent uh, overseas right now. Uh, Lockheed Martin and Mantec are really the only ones to, to really look into. Uh, Ra Raytheon, I think they might be in Kuwait for me. Maybe uh, they're, I think they're definitely in Qatar. So, you know, Kuwait, Iraq, Syria, pretty much the only places you're going to be going. Jordan, maybe. But you're going to end up in, uh, probably end up in Jordan. Uh, excuse me, Kuwait or Iraq first, and then they'll probably move you along to places like Syria or Jordan. So <sighs> I just wish uh, Afghanistan was still an option. I miss those mountains, especially during the winter time when snow is on the mountains. That's beautiful, especially when you're up in either Bagram or Shank. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so it, it was nice to kind of stay clear of like you know wrestling or, or action figures for this video. Just do something a little bit different. I don't know how many of these type of videos I'm going to be doing over time, but I mean, this is something that I, I want to do. Just talk about something a little bit different. Uh, if you guys have ideas or there's something specific that you'd like to bring up or you think that would be fun, that would make a great, make for a great video, you know, definitely leave me a message. Uh, I'll be happy to, to respond and, and even make a video about it. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk to you all soon. Goodbye for now.